Mr. Chair. Senator Wyden. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. I think it's an important hearing, and uh, Senator Cantwell has already picked up on a couple of our key issues in the Pacific Northwest. I want to start with you, if I could, uh, Dr. Applegate. Um, I'm going to be on the Oregon coast for town hall meetings uh, this weekend. They will be asking me about tsunamis. And my hometown, of course, is Portland. We've got 12 major bridges spanning the Willamette River. We've got real concerns about the capacity to uh, make sure those bridges can withstand a large earthquake. So let me, if I might, with you, Dr. Applegate, start with a question about the earthquake early warning systems. And obviously, we have these proposals to cut the budget. And could you tell us, if these cuts go through, what capabilities would suffer under the earthquake early warning system kind of process? Specifically, what capabilities would suffer? So uh, we're currently uh, about uh, halfway towards the implementation for the earthquake early warning system uh, with um, the uh, congressional uh, funding support. Um, what the president's, uh, the, the 2018 budget would do would basically focus on our existing uh, uh, capabilities for uh, uh, earthquake uh, monitoring. Uh, so it would uh, uh, not focus on the early warning system, focus on our current capabilities, what we can deliver now in terms of situational awareness. So no capabilities would suffer, in your view, with respect to the earthquake early warning system? It's not, uh, it's, it is a, it's a system a that yes is in development, it's a future. That's you know, a yes or no capability. question. Would any capabilities suffer? Not current capabilities. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question that I'd like a response on in writing within a week because this is so important to me. I mean, your written testimony says the early warning system will provide, quote, an additional layer of safety and a significant boost in capabilities. Yet you seem to be suggesting that well, this cut's not going to be that big a deal, and maybe it's redundant. So I want to have you square your written testimony with my um, question. Can I have that answer within a week? It would go to the chair and the ranking minority member. Uh, absolutely. Great. Absolutely. One last question, if I might, then, for you. Um, where is our wonderful people from the Forest Service? There you are, Mr. Casamasa. Thank you. Mr. Castlemasa, as you know, we have been working hard on this committee. It's been the longest running battle since the Trojan War to end fire borrowing and this horrible practice that really discourages the prevention that we need. If Congress fixes the Forest Service's persistent budgeting issue that results in fire borrowing, my view is that would allow the agency to have more resources available to tackle the very emergencies that we're talking about today. Is that a view you share? Well, certainly, if we did have additional, additional um, appropriated dollars that we could allocate towards other programs, we could then um, actually deploy resources to um, to look at and monitor and um, evaluate other catastrophic So fixing events. fire borrowing specifically. I don't want to just go off into the la-la world of more resources. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't ending fire borrowing help you have more resources to address emergencies? It would make more resources available. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.